uh, Trey Lynette is with us, and he has offered to do a little something tonight on uh, technique with the airbrush. Uh, Trey, if you're ready, we're ready, sir. Okay. Um, can, can you hear me? Yes. 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 Okay. Uh, yes. okay. Um, first thing I do is I'm going to show you a couple pieces I've done that are airbrushed. Um, this is an airbrush piece. It's the different lighthouses that we have around on, from Ship Island. And this is all air, that is all airbrushed, including the uh, texture and everything on, the, on it. I want to zoom, little, zoom out. Yeah, just a little bit. There okay. Okay. This is another piece that's been airbrushed. And I was putting a uh, bamboo pattern around the outside of it. On it. And then add a little butterfly on the back of it. That's a character to it. But what we're going to do today, we're, I'm, I'm going to talk about airbrushing. Here's a couple of items that I've done. Some different... Uh, practice pieces and stuff, airbrushing. But what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to talk about, and fortunately, what I'm going to do is totally different than what was done before. Um, that Pat, it's Pat, right? That just did the demo? Paul. 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 Paul, he, Paul you did an excellent demo on and, uh, and, and doing what you're doing. So um, what I want to cover, and I'm using the same airbrush as he was using, um, both this is a larger has a larger tip on it. Uh, this one has a very small tip. It's a micron type tip. But what I want to do your is show you what different stencils do to to it. I'm going to show you a stencil. What's happening with it? And And we'll put some, a couple of drops of, uh, let, me, let me put a, an opaque purple in it. Put a couple of drops in. And I'm just going to put away a stencil up on the side of it. Now what I'm gonna do to start with, when you start spraying, you need to start spraying off of the piece that you're doing just to make sure that, that you're getting a good spray. That you get a good spray pattern, don't get a lot of uh, dots and everything else in it. I'm gonna make a first pass here, right, right down this border. Right on the edge, and you can see I have a nice crisp edge there. Next one I'm gonna do, I'm gonna actually come in and spray further over, and it's a little heavier. But the next pattern I'm gonna do on this is I'm actually gonna spray, the center of my spray never touches the pattern, edge of the pattern. And you can see I still have a line down that I sprayed. Hmm. So you can get a very, very, very fine edge on that from doing that. The other thing that controls the edge is whether your stencil is down flat or, in this case, let me pick it up and see if I can pick it up and keep it up. And if you notice that edge there, it's, it's a sort of fuzzy edge. It's not a real solid edge on it. So by keeping the stencil all the way down, you get a nice crisp, edge on this here, including on this one. But this one, it's it's sort of muted back under because you're getting underspray back, back underneath the pattern. Some different things that you're on doing that. Um, uh, other patterns that you can work out. I just ripped a piece of uh, Tissue paper off, or not tissue paper, but uh, paper towel. Just paper towel. And 
that gives me a very natural edge across that. You get a real natural edge with the, with the paper towel. You can also do a similar thing with, with a piece of paper. And it'll give you a slightly different edge because it tears differently. Yeah, I was just writing that. Clouds and mountains. Yep. yep. Gives you a really nice different effects on some of this on that. So you just, you know, um, but you can keep a natural organic thing in there. And I don't have any handy right now, but another thing that works real well is, uh, well, maybe I, maybe I can get a piece, is uh, cotton. See if I can get enough off of here to make it work. But the cotton works real well. And put another pattern down from it. This works real well, especially in clouds. So you got to spray heavy and see what's happening. You and you're you're getting a lot of spray through on, on doing that. You got to hang on to it because sometimes the air will push your quote stencil unquote off and around. <laughs> yes, it will. Yep, it will. So I'm just doing a couple of quick things of that nature. Um, let's uh, grab another stencil. And, and this is a very easy thing to do. It's easy to do a ball. I have a round stencil. And what I'm going to do is almost, I'm, I'm going to concentrate on this area here and then lightly hit this top section. So, concentrate on the bottom and real light on the top. Now I have a three dimensional ball. Ooh, and it doesn't wow. take. So, you saw how easy that was. So it's just using the stencil and concentrating on the sides of it. The other thing, this is a piece of frisket, and I'm going to go ahead and actually do this butterfly on doing it and, and show how I would do doing it. I've actually cut out, there's a bunch of things on it. I've actually cut this section here out. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to mask some areas off so I don't get overspray on them. because I don't want to overspray everything else. Let's, let's go ahead. I'll do purple in this first area. Uh, I'm on the first get testing it. Next, I'm a, oops, let me get the head. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and do a bot, bring the body out. And I've already cut this, so all, all, I got, all I'm gonna have to do is peel the sections off of it. I don't wanna peel that one. Kill the farm. Okay, I'm going to go in and what I'm gonna do is I'm trying to, I'm gonna do just the outside edges around that around that edge. This is a double action airbrush. Right, 
now let's go ahead and clean it out. And by the way, I recommend distilled water when you're doing when you're doing paint. It's not that expensive, and it, it ensures that you are uh, that something doesn't affect the paint color from from what you're using. You mix it or whatever in there, so. I'm switching to red, so. Oh, I'll have a brush. I'd set a paintbrush here and don't see it. I'll just use this one. While Trey is setting up a minute, pardon me, this is Eddie Castle, the Cat and Eddie. Uh, while Trey is setting up, we will start our gallery at 8.30 tonight. If you've got something you'd like to show up a gallery, uh, you text or you, you chat mail uh, Dane and tell him I have something to show. Dane will start the list and we'll start at 8.30. And remember, the clock goes off at 9 o'clock. And uh, but we welcome your input. Dane, uh, we're back to you again, Trey. Okay. Uh, let me grab this next thing and frisk it out of here. And when I'm doing this type of paint, I'm doing it the other way around. I put the darker colors first. Because if I get an overspray, I would rather have the overspray with the lighter color. I can get I can get by with overspraying the darker color with the light color, but not vice versa. With respect to wood, um, and directly on wood, do not sand any finer than three, 320. If you go finer than 320 with it, you may have an adhesion problem with your paint. And as, a, as I'm doing this, let me add another thing. If you wind up getting a, an airbrush that's really, really dirty, um, what one thing that does cut uh, acrylic paint is lacquer thinner. So if you've got an airbrush that's totally clogged up and everything, um, I've actually taken my water airbrush and soaked it in lacquer thinner overnight to clean it. I don't know about some of the other brands. Most of the, most of the quality airbrushes are going to have good. Uh, the gaskets and stuff will be resistant to uh, most solvents, or should be. I have both an Iwata and the Harbor Freight ones, and, and I've done that too. Lacquer thinner is great stuff. No yeah, it, it, it'll take care of all that. All this stuff on here, lacquer thinner will take it right off. It also works good on your stencils if you want to reuse your stencils if you're doing them out of thicker vinyl or something like that. Yep. Okay, I've got a red in here. So we're going to come back. I start spraying off. Well, I've got some bad drops of something in there. It's water. Lower the piece, try to get it in the camera. Go towards your left. There you go. Thank okay. you. I just got to drop it back down where it needs to go. And I'm actually spraying it on the edge of stuff to try instead of instead of every instead of spraying stuff directly on it and having solid colors. I'd like to have a little bit of trans. A little, a little bit of transition, so. That sort of, it sort of adds to the 3D effect too. Yes, it does. Okay, that was the red.
Now, what size is your nozzle tip, Trey? That one there, I consider it's a medium. It's a, it's a standard I want to. Uh, it sprays most of this uh, stuff in there. Um, this other one is a Micron, which is a very fine tip. But the Micron also allows a lot finer control. Now, you had talked about getting an airbrush for, for trying to spray the, an outside of something, of a bowl or something, for your yeah. finish. Right. I, I have tried that, and it does not work worth a damn. Hmm. OK. Um, what works is going and buying a, what they call it, a touch-up spray gun for automotive spray gun, but a touch-up type spray gun. That works beautifully. Gravity mm -hmm. fed, that works extremely well for, for that type of work. Like the HVLP sprayers. Yeah, I, I, I completely yeah. agree with Trey, yeah. And I'm using it, it's a VLP sprayer. And, and I did find another thing on those two is that quality makes a lot of difference. Right. On, on, the, on those particular spray guns. Um, when I had the one that had a, low, a lower quality, you know, cheaper gun, it, I had more problem with uh, it running and getting runs in it. Now with a with the high quality gun, I don't have that problem. Makes sense. Okay. Now what I have here is yellow. Get some more paint. Trey, is the reason you pick the order of the colors you're spraying is because of how you are removing the stencil pieces? Uh, yes, because if you'll notice now, I am getting some overspray from what I'm doing. Yeah, you might want to explain what overspray is. Um, what I just did and when I'm painting, I actually got some yellow on some of these other pieces. But because yellow is such a light color on there, it's, it's not going to make a significant difference in the picture. Um, if I came back with a dark color uh, on doing that, it would make a lot of difference. So in this case, I'm, I'm going with the order of dark, lighter to uh, dark to lighter. Okay, and let's pull this pattern off. Let me show you what we got. We got a butterfly. I got to say, ouch. Um, and you saw how easy that was to do. Yeah. Yeah, it's nothing good. more. It's nothing more than the pattern. Now, in this case, the pattern is when I put the pattern down, I transferred the pattern to the wood. And when I did that, the black lines will show through. Now, if I don't want that black line to show through, I would have put the pattern on the frisket and and then cut it, cut it out. Another simple pattern you can do. And this will be with masking tape. I'm basically going to do this. All right, well, I'll show you how to do it. You can use first get up mask, mask, this, this is cheaper and easier, what I'm doing. And we'll draw some lines on it. Try to keep stuff centered in the page thing. Okay. 
And we'll do something different on this side just to show you what Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and cut these out. Um, on the knife you're using, it needs to be sharp. Uh, when I took a Drew Barrier airbrushing class, uh, literally, if we cut out one picture, or cutting a set of, uh, cutting one thing out there, we changed we changed the uh, the the blade. So we frequently change blades. And I'm not following the line precisely, it's just there. So you don't have any problem coloring outside the lines? No, not whatsoever. I got thrown so out of kidney for that. You so saw how precise I drew them to start with. So. Okay. So I'm going to pull this first piece off down the bottom, and we'll work our way up. And let me pick an appropriate color for it. Well, Trey's picking out the color folks. This is Eddie Castle and Captain Eddie. Um, it's coming up on the bottom of the hour. You're tuned in to Worldwide Wood Turners, and our website is worldwidewoodturners.org, and our email is worldwidewoodturners at gmail.com. We invite your participation, your input, and if you'd like to do a, a, a demonstration for us, we want to do at least one demonstration each week, and we'll do more and more and more as we can. This is the greatest free show in wood, turn, wood turning, so we invite you to get in your club and do something. That's what it's all about, come on. All right, back to Trey. Okay, I threw some blue in here. And I'm gonna, again, start off on the stencil and I'm spraying right across the top edge of the stencil to put a line in there. And I'll come back in, peel that off. Repeat. This is something that Ben Poe did a lot of, and it's a, it's one color, but you, you're developing a pattern from that color. Always start on the on the stencil, not on the face directly. Please let me put that pencil back in my pocket because otherwise I'll keep trying to use it for
And then we'll do this one at the top so you can see what this line did up here. That's already cut it. everything off. And you can see the pattern that we just, you know, we just put on there. Back from the camera a little bit, sir. Thank you. Very neat. Wow, that's very nice. So, and I should have worked better on some of the variations on that, but it, it's, you see what's going on with it. Um, one other quick thing I did want to show you is on, on a stencil, if you want a really small, fine line, paper, just simply cut it. Then I'm going to lay this down. See, that's why you, you spray off the side. You see what that did there? So I have a really fine line on there. And you can make it as fine as you want. You also can do grass this way by having individual strands. Hmm. You know, and you would do them all individually. And that's forming some grass and you know plant vegetation. And you can get this extremely fine because these two lines are right next to each other. So we'll see what I can do. Okay. You can see how fine that line, that last line was in there. See how fine that line is. That is nice. That, that is really nice. But that's simply taking a piece of paper and cutting it and then laying the two pieces side by side and shifting them just a little bit to be able to get your color on it. Gives you great control <laughs> over where you're putting things. Yes, it does. And we talked about cleaning this. Um, lacquer thinner. Lacquer thinner cuts acrylic paints. That was dried paint. You saw what lacquer thinner does to it. And you know what? If I take this and rub this on the wall of my shop, it's going to pull paint off the wall in the shop because it's, it's an acrylic paint. Oh, it helps if I'm on the right side of the stencil. Any questions? That was just a quick and dirty technique on doing different things um, and stuff. Uh, stencils come in all different shapes and sizes. One thing don't overlook is they make stencils for fingernails. But there are a lot of neat, and we, I know we're getting this tiny with stuff with it, but they make, make fingernail stencils. Like, okay. Oh, there's a tree. The, air, the fingernail airbrush industry is huge. They have great stencils for the fingernails. They're small and precise. They're well cut. They, they work great. And there's a little bitty tiny tree. All right, got a camera. There. there you go. Can you see it? It's tiny. Very tiny. A little seashell. Um, see, if, see if that'll focus on that. Yes. 
yeah. You see how tiny these are? Oh, yeah. But there's my fingernail. You see how small those are. But they're made for fingernails, but they have a great, a lot of stencils for it. And a lot of them are very reasonably priced, you know, from the Chinese type, you know, stencils. So, and there's some neat, neat things in some of them. Well, Trey, we thank you for this demo tonight.